what's going on everybody welcome back to another unity tutorial today we're going to be covering something a lot of people have wanted me to cover um that i haven't gotten to which involves this particle system over here that you see playing right now from my video on implementing enemy death effects using unity now i'm not going to create this exact particle system here but I figured I'd create it from scratch and have you guys follow along in the process so you can get an idea of how you can make something similar and how you can tweak and change this to whatever you'd like for whatever kind of game you're trying to make. Again, best way to learn how to use a particle system is just going to be playing with it, messing around with these parameters and seeing what you can make. Um, if you do want a more in-depth covering of the different modules in the particle system here, I have another video for that that I've already made. I will link that in the description if you want to check that out. But for this video, I'm going to be moving a little bit faster just to get get you kind of an idea of how to make something similar to this. So I'm going to go ahead and I am going to disable that game object so it's not bothering us and it's not polluting the scene. First things first, we're going to go in here into our hierarchy and we're going to go we're going to right click and we're going to go to effects and create a particle system. Now, first thing I'm going to do is go here to the transform and I'm going to reset it. Now for any kind of uh, particle system that you're going to be making, one thing I would do, um, this is just how I've always um, organized it ever since I learned how to do this, is your main uh, object here that you create, let me just name it new effect name it whatever you want um, this isn't actually going to be emitting anything so I'm gonna check off emission here and I'm gonna check off shape and render now all this will do is control everything under it so uh, what one thing that's really interesting that unity does is the particle system at the top here of the hierarchy the parent is always going to control everything below it so if I hit play if I select this particle system to play anywhere it's gonna play everything below it as well so this is all we're gonna do with our first one here we're just gonna have that set there and then we're gonna right click on it and we're going to go to effects and create another particle system under it and I'm gonna bring this um, I'm gonna bring this up here or is it already above my plane yes it is okay good and the only other thing I have in my scene that's actually active right now is just a uh, ground cube here that I've stretched um, just for a floor so we can see particles collide and everything. So now we're going to go back to our particle system we have here and you'll see if I hit restart on this first one that we made here, because this is a child of that particle system, it's going to play this one as well. Now this is really handy because this will... Uh, let us control when our effect, when everything under this plays and we can mess around with how we organize stuff. So this is just really neat. We can name this, uh, I'm just gonna name it cubes because the first object or the first particle system I wanna make is just gonna be the cubes that fall and they collide with uh, objects in the scene and everything. So first things first, I'm gonna leave this playing on loop so we can see what's going on. You've got all your different modules here. I'm gonna go down to render I'm going to change this from billboard to mesh so I can get it to emit in uh, 3D mesh. Right now it's using cube. You can select something else, but we're going to keep it cube for this. And then we need a material for it because uh, we probably don't want the default particle system material to play. So we're going to go to materials or anywhere you want in your assets folder. I made a materials folder. I'm going to create a new folder. Just call it new materials because I have an, another folder here with other materials in it. I'm going to right click it, hit create, and go down to material. I'm gonna name this cube mat. And all I'm really gonna do is change this to like a bright blue here. You can play around with all these other um, settings, emission, if you're using post processing and stuff like that to make something look really nice. But for now, this will do. We'll go back here into the scene, into our particle system, and I'm gonna change this material here um, to my cube material. So now you can see that a little bit better in the scene there. And if we look around, we got our nice cubes emitting. 
Now we're done with the render for now. I'm going to go into cubes, um, which is going to be whatever you name this over here. Um, but this is just a main module in your particle system. In here, you can tweak a lot of stuff. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to toggle um, 3D start size here. Or not 3D start size, 3D start rotation, actually. We don't really need to mess with the start size here. And then I'm going to use this little arrow on the right here to change it to random between two different constants. So we can set our start rotation to be a randomly selected value between two values we pick here. So you can go 0 to 360, you could do 50 to whatever else. Um, you can tweak these as you wish, but now you can see our cubes are emitting um, with a different rotation every time. So it's got a nice little bit of randomness in there. I'm going to go ahead to lifetime here, set that to random between two constants as well. I'm going to say 2.5, between 2.5 and 5 for this works pretty well. And then random start speed, I'll go something like, I'll do 0 to 3. That should be good. Uh, now for the start size, it's a little bit too big right now. So I'm going to go ahead and set that to random first, but then I'm going to lower this to 0.1 uh, and then a, and point, point 0.5. I think it looks pretty good. Um, so again, play around with these until you get something you like. Last thing we're going to do up here in the main module for now is toggle on the gravity modifier. Uh, one, I feel like is a little bit too aggressive for what I'm trying to go for here. But point, point, point 0.5, point, eh, I'm going to go for like 0.6. I think that looks nice. Now, you see our particles aren't really emitting um, in any more than just one direction right now. What, what actually changes the direction your particles emit is and is going to be this shape module here. So we're going to close our main module and we're going to go to shape. And you can see it's using this cone right now to emit them out that way. So I'm going to go ahead and select the shape here and I'm going to change it to a sphere, which already gives us something more like what we actually want here. Um, I kind of want the particles to go off to just completely random directions because this is going to be kind of like an explosion effect. So right now, this is all we really need to do in shape here. That looks good. But one thing you can do is you can toggle the radius. You can make it a, a bigger um, shape that it emits from. You can also change the thickness of where you want the particles to emit and play around with that. There's a lot of different values here. Again, just play around with it, see what you can come up with, see what you can make. Now, one more thing we're going to do is we're going to do emission, and you can set it to rate over time up here, which is nice, but for an explosion, we just want it to be in a burst. So right here in burst, I'm going to set this rate over time to zero. And I'm down here in burst, I'm going to go to the right and I'm going to hit plus. Now we can set how many particles we want in our burst here. Uh, I'm going to set this to something like 60. And these values you don't really need to worry about. Um, you can play with these, but most of the time you're probably not going to be. This is what we're looking for right now. Uh, you can play around with how many you want in your burst. Uh, and you can play around with these as well if you do need these uh, for the particle system you're trying to make. But for the sake of the tutorial, this is what we're after. All right, so right now the particles are just falling through the floor. We want them to collide with the surface. So we go down here to this collision module and we toggle that on. Now, you can see the particles aren't colliding with anything yet. And that's because we have planes selected here where you'd have to select more precisely what you want your particles to actually collide with. This is really good if you're worried about performance and you're trying to make your game run better. But for the tutorial, we just want world on, which will let our particles, it will check for collisions with anything in the world that has a collider for our particles. So you can see now they're colliding with the ground, but they're a little bit too bouncy. So I'm going to lower the bounce here to point, point 0.2. That looks good. Um, they're sliding a bit much, so I'm going to dampen them a little bit more. Let's say 0.2. That's pretty good. So we already got something that looks a little bit better right there. Play around with these values. See what you can do. One more thing that we're going to want to do here to get it to look more like this demo effect here 
is we can toggle on size over lifetime, which is going to control, obviously, the size of the particles over their lifetime. Now in this curve here, you can pick what kind of curve you want the particle system to base that on. So it's default to linear here, um, linear increasing. I'm going to go for something like that. I think that, that looks pretty good for that. That will just prevent our particles from just disappearing instantly. And it just looks a lot nicer. Now, for that particle system, that's all I really did. Again, you can play around with start speed, set this to a higher number, and the particles will fly out a little bit farther. Um, I'm probably going to leave, I'll leave it on five for that. That looks nice. And then you can obviously play with duration um, here, the lifetime and a duration of the particle system. Now, one other thing that particle system had here is it has the, uh, the spheres around it when uh, the debris also spawns in. So we're going to add something like that in there. All right. So we've got that effect. Now I'm going to go ahead and right click on new effect, which is just our parent object. Go to effects, particle system. And I've created another particle system. Now to make things a little bit easier here, because right now you'll see if I hit restart on all of these, this is all that the, this is the default particle system you get again. And I just want to work from the values I had with the other one. So I'm going to click on cubes here. I'm going to right click the component, hit copy component, which will copy all the parameters in here. Select our new particle system, right click it and paste component values. And now if I hit restart, and I'm disable this cubes one that we have here. You can see this one is just the same exact thing. I'm going to rename it to spheres. So first things first, just like we did last time, I'm going to go to the render and we're going to change this. It's already set to mesh, mesh now, but we want this to be spheres. So I'm going to set it to sphere and then uh, I'm going to leave it the same material for this, but you can change it to whatever material you'd like. So we're going to go back up to e, not emission, we're gonna go to our main module. And with this one, the big difference here is that they're not going to be moving when we instantiate them. We want them to stay in place. We also don't want gravity, so I'm gonna get rid of gravity. And you can see right now we just get these spheres here, kind of like that. And we also don't want them to be around that long because that's a bit too much. Um, we're gonna set that from 0.5 to one. I think that's a pretty good lifetime. And in start size, we can make them way bigger because we want them to take up a lot more room. And you can see we're already getting kind of that effect that we had with the other one there. In fact, you could leave it just like that if you wanted to. But I want to make it a little look a little bit nicer. So we're going to... I like that being set to that. I'm going to set that 1 to 2 because that's a little bit better. Um, again, these are spheres, so we don't really need to worry about start rotation. It's not going to matter. We're going to go to shape, uh, make sure that the radius here is good. So I'm going to turn on my, I'm going to toggle back on, set to active my cubes here. And I can see if it covers them uh, completely when it starts. Make this a little bit bigger until it does that. It's a bit too big, something like that. I think that looks good. Now I do think we can make that a little bit shorter on the lifetime here. So 7.5 to 5 or 0.75 and 0.25. That looks nice. And you can go down to size over lifetime and we can change this to something a little bit quicker. You can play around with these uh, anchor points here as well to get something a little bit more precise. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. Um, I want these to be a bit bigger. Go for one to three. So you can see right there, just playing around a little bit, you can make something that looks like that, which already looks a lot nicer than um, just having the debris in there. And if you wanted to, for example, you could have these um, go up a little bit as well. You can make the gravity modifier negative, so you can have negative 0.5 on here. And you can see they go up slightly when they spawn in. You can make this random even for every single particle so that some of them go up, but some of them don't. Again, 
it's all about what you're trying to make. But you can see here, um, if I go back to this main effect and I go into the scene, uh, into the game view, we've got a pretty neat little explosion effect that looks very similar to this one. Um, I just played around with the values a little bit and I got something like that. You can make anything you want here with these. So going to the new effect here, last thing I'm going to do, if I'm going to put this on an enemy, I'm going to shift select all of these and I'm going to set these, uh, the looping on them to off. You can play around with the duration here as well. Um, in this case, we don't need to, but you can see now it's not going to loop anymore. But if I hit play on this first one here, I don't have anything else selected. I just have the parent selected. If I hit play, it will play everything under it. And then obviously if you want your uh, particle system to play when your game starts, you're going to want to select, where is it? Play on awake. There it is. So you're going to want play on awake to be selected so that when your, uh, when your particle uh, system, when your game object that you made is instantiated into the game, it'll just play right away. If you're doing it, if you're going to be using the video that I'm going to leave in the description that I got this effect over here from. But it's pretty much how you can make a particle system that looks something like that. Um, it's nothing too crazy. You can probably make something way better if you play around a little bit more. But I hope that helps some of you guys out. I know a lot of you wanted to see how I made the uh, demo effect here from my other video. And uh, that's going to cover it for this tutorial. Hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I'll see you guys next time.